Hello, my name is Richard. I am the Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Wimberley. We are here at the beautiful Blue Hole Regional Park celebrating its 10 year anniversary. Last time we were joined by the City of Wimberley Mayor, Gina Fulkerson, and today we are joined by Wimberley Valley Watershed Association Founder and Executive Director, David Baker. David, thanks so much for being here with me today. Thanks for inviting me. What a beautiful morning. Yeah. So David, how did you get your start in conservation and preserving our natural resources? Well, I moved to Wimberley in 1988 and was fortunate to be able to purchase half of Jacob's Well and property there. And, you know, having the well literally in my backyard, I became very curious about, you know, where's the water coming from? Is it clean? And, you know, what's, what's going on in the upper watershed? And 1996, a group of us got together, uh, Jack Holland, Johanna Smith, we formed the Wimberley Valley Watershed Association. And we, it, the city was just, we were talking about incorporating the city. Um, and one of the, one of the committees was the water and sewer committee. And I, uh, that I was on that committee and they said, we need a group that's going to do conservation. That's going to do science and research. That's going to educate our, both our youth and adults about the importance of water. And so, that was the beginning and it's been almost 26 years now, 27 years, and we've, we've really accomplished a lot in that time. For those tuning in that might not have heard of the Wimberley Valley Watershed Association, could you describe the organization just in a nutshell? Yeah, I mean, we've become known just as the Watershed Association mm -hmm. because we, we do work here in Wimberley, but we do work regionally. Our main purpose is to protect water engaging communities to protect our water and watersheds. And we do that through land conservation. We've protected over 500 acres in the upper watershed uh, that above Jacob's Well. Uh, we do uh, 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 watershed protection and conservation science and research. Um, we do environmental uh, advocacy and environmental planning. Um, and then regenerative connection, connecting people back to nature and environmental education. And our newest program is Art for Water, and I'm very excited about that. But we think it's really about, you know, valuing this natural world, connecting people to it, uh, like you do here at Blue Hole, we do at Jacob's Well. Um, it's, it's really about, um, you know, connecting people to nature so that they, they ultimately build a value and connection and want to protect this, this beautiful landscape that we're in. You've mentioned some buzzwords that I want to hit on. Could you describe our aquifer and how that connects with Jacob's Well and Cypress Creek? Yeah, aquifer is essentially an underground uh, water source. Here we live in a karst aquifer, karst being the broken up limestone you think of holes and, and sinkholes and caves. It's been dissolved out by millions of years of rainfall. This was an ancient seabed that, that, that formed the Trinity and Edwards aquifers. And the Trinity, uh, you know, it recharges when we rain, when it rains, so we have water flow into the aquifer. And then it appears in, the, in springs like Jacob's Well and creates a beautiful creeks like Cypress Creek. Um, so the aquifer is the source of both the creek, but it's also the source of our drinking water. We have nearly two million people in central Texas that depend on the Trinity and Edwards aquifers. And that is the sole source of drinking water for pretty much everybody in Wimberley, unless you're on rainwater harvesting, which we really, you know, love and mm -hmm. promote because that, that helps from uh, depressurizing the aquifer, which, which can dry up the spring or yeah, even there are lots of small seeps and springs that that are that get get impacted by over pumping of the aquifer. So now let's dive into Blue Hole. No pun intended. Uh, how does this park fit into the conservation efforts of the Watershed Association and Hayes County? Well, uh, I joined the Hayes County Parks Board in 1998, and that was uh, Judge Etheridge appointed us, and it was the first time that we had come together as a community to develop a, um, a master plan for parks and open space. Because to get parks and wildlife funding, you have to have a master plan. Um, 
we did a bond in 2003 for I think three and a half million, the 2007 bond for 30 million, and then in 2020, 75 million. So that, those funds were instrumental in helping to acquire uh, Blue Hole and also to fund the, the, um, the development of the park. Blue Hole is an iconic Texas swimming hole. It's one of the most beautiful places uh, maybe on earth. And to, you know, it was threatened with development. There was going to be 350 homes, you know, and a lodge right up on the hill above us. And to the credit of the community, uh, Mayor Kleffer, Mary Lee Wood, and of course Peter Way and their family came together to acquire that land. And that land was funded through those parks and open space bond monies and uh, foundation investments as well as a big grant from Texas Parks and Wildlife and many, many donations from um, smaller donations from people in the community. Mm -hmm. So this is a, you know, this is a bit of the commons that's been reclaimed. You know, you know the, the popularity of this place. Mm -hmm. Over 60,000 visitors, we have 30 to 40,000 at, at Jacob's Well. That um, is drawing people to our community. Uh, not only the local people who enjoy this, but people from all over the world that travel to Wimberley now to, to swim in this iconic swimming hole. It's, it's just a magnificent place, and I'm just so proud of what, how it was preserved and, and developed uh, using this, this really thoughtful sites, sustainable sites practice. It's, a, it's an extraordinary, world-class park and, and, and preserve. So, uh, I think people, uh, you know, they're, they're fascinated by, um, you know, this this kind of pristine environment, and we see that in the numbers of people that are that are coming here annually. So these parks are booming with tourism and constant use from our local populations for hiking, swimming, and other recreational uses. What is the economic impact of places like Jacob's Well and Blue Hole? You know, I, I like to say that Jacob's Well is the, sort of the economic engine of our valley mm -hmm. and Cypress Creek and Blue Hole, you know, those are the main attractions. We have nearly a hundred million dollars in overnight lodging wow. uh, that, the, and, and tourism dollars that come in from all those visitors we mentioned. That is about 80% of our local sales tax and that is the, the economic uh, heart of, of Wimberley also the environmental part it, it, it's the, this this pristine water this clean water um, that is what is just so attractive here it also is the property values of, of the, the creek the land along it and that funds our schools that funds our county infrastructure and services so there's a lot tied to this this clean clear flowing stream mm -hmm. so I think it's, you know, it's not only just an environmental treasure, it's also an economic uh, resource that is, is central to the, uh, I think, sustainability and long-term long prosperity of this valley. Mm -hmm. We all want people using our parks, but can you kind of explain this balance that we've been talking about of uh, recreation versus conservation? You know, I think, because this park was designed using that sustainable sites initiative, that was a very thoughtful process. The Lady Bird Johnson Wildfire mm -hmm. Center, large committee, uh, the uh, that that design itself is is put together in such a way as to reduce stormwater runoff, to you know, infiltrate more water, to sequester more carbon. Uh, to preserve these, you know, unique habitats here. So the design of the park really lends, I think, to the sustainability of it. Um, but yes, the demand is higher than what a park of this size can serve, or even Jacob's Well. We need more parkland, we need more spaces for people to, to recreate and have access to water. I uh, was really happy about uh, seeing El Rancho Sima, the, the Sentinel mm -hmm. Peak Preserve. Um, but I think, you know, the bigger, the bigger issue is, is the growth and the demand for water uh, regionally and how that may impact uh, the springs like Jacob's Well and, and Blue Hole, ultimately. Jacob's Well is sort of the source of Cypress Creek 
and without that there is no blue hole mm -hmm. so it, it's a system and that's why the watershed concept is so important that we need to manage at a watershed scale and so I think you know I think we have a stewardship ethic in this valley people move here because they love the environment right but you know if we you know we've heard the term love it to death too much impact uh, can you know can can really take away those conservation values so the work that you do and the staff as well as um, the uh, you know the master naturalists, the other the other stewards of, of the preserve. Those folks. That's what's so important is to kind of teach that ethic to everyone that's coming here. Get some of the pollen of of our our conservation um, uh, ethic on them, so that they take that and spread it back where they they came from. And uh, but it is a challenge, and I know that uh, long term we're going to have to you know. We're going to have to create more spaces for for people to recreate, or uh, you know, the demand is higher than the need. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, can you believe it's been ten years already? <laughs> it's it's really amazing, you yeah. know, to to think of where this all started, mm -hmm. and you know how how run down things were, but how beautiful it is now. All of the landscaping, yeah. the restoration. And all the people and the organizations that were involved. Oh my yeah. gosh. The Friends of Blue Hole. Right. Just Herculean task to, to raise the money to do all of the, of the planning and, uh, and ultimately construct one of the most beautiful parks, I think, in, in all of Texas. It, it's, it's, a, it's an icon. And, I, you know, you see it on all the, you know, <laughs> all the list as the number one swimming hole in Texas. Mm -hmm. we're, we're here. And, and I was so proud of that. And it's proud of the community for stepping up and the leaders of our, of our, uh, uh, of Wimberley and, uh, and Hayes County and all the, the foundations that came together uh, to, you know, to put up the resources to, to protect this place. It's really, it's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, I have been talking today with founder and executive director of the Watershed Association here in Wimberley. David Baker, thank you so much for coming on today. Richard, thank you for having me. This has been really, really wonderful. Well, it's been my pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.